am giving away my step-by-step process that allowed me to make three heirloom hand-embroidered Easter dresses as a mama of four, four little ones, while running two businesses in one week. Oh, and our oldest two, they were on spring break this week. <laughs> like any other sewing project or really any other project you're trying to do in life, any other thing you're trying to do, starts with a design and a concept. Okay, so when I was at a farmhouse uh, a few weeks ago for their gap and gush, I already had this plan ruined in my head. I'm thinking for Easter this year, we are going to go white, textured white. I wanted all the texture and I wanted to pair it with color via the, be it, how do you say it? Beatrice Rabbit, be it, no, Potter. Beatrice Potter Rabbit. Y'all know what I'm talking about, it's like a classic. We're gonna pair up that sweet little rabbit, those sweet motifs. I've, I've, blah, 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 I can talk. So I got, you know, like the stuff that you've seen over and over and over again, they're absolute classics. And then like I would take some of the, um, I've made motifs up. So I took some like the leaves from the plants in here and I've blown them up and I've got this laid out. So I know where the embroidery goes. Oh, this is for Audrey's, how cool are those roses? And uh, I wanted her to be like a little more grown and elegant. And then both of the girls, the younger girl, well, for all girls, but the younger two, they've got like really sweet motifs of the main guy, the, the like, rabbit, what's his name? I don't know. I don't actually know the story to these things. I just think they're pretty. <laughs> it's like a theme in my life. I don't actually know the nitty gritty. I just think it's pretty and I just want to do it because it's pretty. I know that might sound shallow, but I'm not a shallow person, I promise. Anywho, so we've got three tex textures fabrics that I'm going off of. This I love this the idea of this for the skirt this and this will be the hem of all of the dresses then we've got this dimity this white dimity it has like a very slight zigzag cording zigzag situation very very slight raised edge to it and then we have a is that a bird's eye i believe so i think it's a small bird's eye um pk so just more texture and then to kind of accent it with some just i wanted like classic you know easter soft colors so we've got this lovely pink and i don't want to distract from the embroidery work that we're going to have going on because that's going to have some bold colors and i just wanted it to like kind of polish her off. So we have this soft pink. This is a satin batiste um, piping. Love, just, it's just a great quality cord in there. It's soft and it molds and it's gentle. And then we have this sweet number. So I think I'm gonna use this around, It's and it's just darling, like with the tiny little check. They had one that was a little bit bigger and I reached for that and then I saw this and I was like, <laughs> that's the one that I want so anyway so I grab, grabbed this because I just loved it and I thought it went really well with the um, piping and I'm envisioning using this around necklines or maybe like uh, if any of the dresses are sleeveless using that as a way to wrap that up and then all of them are going to have this sweet little um, gingham button it's a blue checkered a blue gingham button so this year I wanted to do white textured white. I wanted all the texture with the Beatrice Potter embroidery. From there, I needed to figure out what patterns. So you got to figure out your design and your concept. And from there, you need to figure out what patterns you're going to use. This might be an interchangeable step. You might be figuring out the two. It's kind of like a 1A and a 1B situation. So figure out what sewing patterns you want to use. Figure out what what materials, what embroidery work, what are the pieces you're going to put, it may not be hand embroidery work, but what are the pieces you're going to put to make it an heirloom unique, one of a kind garment. Now, here comes the meat of the process. I sort of chopped my hair off, don't mind me. But one of the great tools, one of the great ways to be super efficient with your time, energy, all the rest of it is to implement batch work. You may have heard of it. It's not a new concept. I think Henry Ford came up with it, but we are going to be implementing it. 
However, how can you take this tool and apply it to something that is unique, handmade, not just the same copy, copy, paste, 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 right? We need to batch work everything. To do this efficiently, set aside a block of time and get into focus. This is the time to focus and really make that the intention. So in my case, I'm creating all the embroidery motifs at once. And we did go to the library. I'm so sorry, but my voice is a little bit hard, hoarse. I don't know what happened. I just woke up like this. <laughs> but yeah, we went to the library for some inspiration, but that blew up in my face. This process does work. Although you may hit some bumps on the road, that's just life. And going to the library on your own with four little ones, well, I would not advise. <laughs> So instead, I went to good old Pinterest and I got my embroidery motifs figured out. Then set up your embroidery station and do all the embroidery at once. Although I keep saying embroidery, this could be lace work, this could be smocking, this could be whatever things you're going to put, whatever embellishments you're going to put on that garment to make it your own, make it that one of a kind thing that just makes you smile, it just sparkles back at you. So. Coming back to embroidery, those tangible pieces are to trace everything and then do all the hand embroidery. Just take a look at yourself. Do you really think it's gonna help? If you always fighting yourself, trying to forget how you felt. Just take a look at yourself. Can't even be your own friend. Cause you're always just stuck in your head. How do you think it's gonna end? Nothing that day. setup saves on time from switching gears from hand embroidery to making room for machine work especially if you have a small space like my space I'm in a little corner guys my own little corner <laughs> so yeah do all of one piece at once it maximizes just your brain and efficiency and your space Along that note, cut out everything at once again try your best to create a little station with the space that you have And now we can go over how you need to put together your garment. So do all the same steps across the garment. For example, I put entredeau into all the shoulder seams. So do all that for all of the garments. Then I joined all the bodices together. This meant putting darts in Audrey's dress, which was one unique step and that's fine. I just did that and got it out of the way. And then I put piping around the necklines of those bodices. From there, I joined the bodice linings to all the bodices turning them all right sides out which means I have my little pusher corner to put those corners and my trim or upper you know I'm in the zone of trimming everything up giving everything a good pressing you know all of that jazz doing everything at once and side note but very very important this is very important the only reason you see me pick up my phone when it rings Okay, the only time I'm picking it up is if it rings, and I am checking to see if it's one of my children's schools. Now, if it rings and it's not one of their schools, that item is for another time. This is my focused sewing time. It's a little bit selfish, it is precious, and frankly, no one is getting a hold of me beside of my kiddos, okay? This is, like I said, this is a focused block of time. If I didn't have children who were in school, the phone would not be near me. Now for two of the dresses, I used this delightful fabric bias band with a pico edging around the arm side. So I put this around the arm side of one of the dresses and then the other of, the, you know, the other dress. So I can move on to the next step. So to prepare the bodices for the skirts, I put piping around the waist. Of course, keep in mind all of these steps can be substituted for other embellishments, say lace shaping or that puffing technique maybe smocking whatever you want to do write down the pieces and see how they overlap so you can maximize your sewing efficiency 
Now on to preparing those skirts, joining the skirt together in the back via a French seam and putting in plackets as needed. So these skirts can be joined to the bodices. To do this, I need to put two rows of gathering threads into each of the skirt tops and I gathered up those little guys so I could join them to the bodices. Dresses one, two, and three. It's like magic, right? That is the construction of the three dresses in a couple of hours during one peaceful afternoon of sewing. Apply this process for your own sewing projects and you will be amazed at the productivity you can achieve. Go check out last year's Easter videos for more sewing inspiration and if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.